The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Clem and today we are going to revamp my old tiny CNC which never really worked. I bought this tiny CNC machine a while ago from some unknown Chinese source and I never got it to really be productive because it's just a pain to use, a pain to set up and when you have set it up you just want to pack it away and do something else. So today we are going to revamp it into a machine that is used like a 3D printer. Just stick your SD card in and hit carve. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. I have removed the old gerbil board of the machine and I have also rebuilt the y-axis because it wasn't running smoothly and now it does. When you are trying out your axis with a drill, always make sure that the motor is not connected to anything because it will work as a generator and fry your board. For this project I am repurposing this old ATX power supply I stripped out of a computer and I will mount it to the back of the machine. The power supply is mounted. Let's strip down the cables. I need three 12 volt lines, of course the ground, and I need the green line to activate the power supply. On most old ATX power supplies you need to short out the green line to ground to make it start up. You can make this connection permanently if your power supply does already have a power switch, but if not, you can use the green and the ground line to create a power on switch. After rewiring the power supply, it suddenly died for no apparent reason. So I got a different power supply out of the dumpster. Hopefully this one works. Everything is connected, it's time for the first test run. It just had a tremendous fail. I was testing out the code and use this knockoff Arduino Mega clone and it blew the voltage regulator right away. So that's another reason why you should use the genuine one because this one stood up no chance of failing. Also the RAM port that I used to the fake Arduino which is also just a cheap Chinese one failed and I'm not sure if I have damaged the original dynamic board. I have to test this and give it another go. Did you see that? The Z axis is behaving strangely. Let's dive into that. I have a suspect. I think the end stop is not engaging properly. Let's find out. For debugging purpose, I always have a USB connection and an Ethernet cable handy up here. So I can plug this in and use my big computer in my office. Let's get into the firmware and configure it properly. Mm -hmm. 
there seems to be a very strange problem. This motor is behaving like I have no idea it's moving up and down in any way possible. This end stop is obviously triggered, but the firmware says no. I've changed everything. Every motor, driver, every part of the electronics, they work separately but not in conjunction with the whole contraption. So the Z axis won't home and it won't move properly. Does strange up and down behaviors with Marlin and with the Repetier firmware. So I have to switch gears because I will give this thing a use and I will make it convenient to use. So let's try out a laser. So a few things are working right now. The x-axis, the y-axis, the display works and I can engage and disable the motor, the spindle motor for the CNC. So I will just hijack this function for the laser so it will turn on with the same G-code command which is M106 S the speed you want for the spindle or the intensity you want for the laser and M107 to Turn it off. I've dismantled the z-axis completely and now it's clear there has to be a mechanical issue. Some of the bearings are broken and they tend to block and stick but I can't really free them because I don't have any replacements. That's another reason to switch to a simpler design. The laser needs to be mounted on the carriage, so let's design and 3D print a mount for it. If you want to work with a resin printer like that, always wear gloves and eye protection. Remember kids, safety first. I've soldered up my wire for the laser and I had to switch colors in between because the plug is just wired up that way it is. You should never do that. Never switch up the colors. By the way, YouTube comments don't allow pictures but the Element 14 community supports comments with pictures so show me your safety first with the hashtag safety first. Did you ever do something that's not recommended but it was necessary? But Make sure you are aware of the hazards, safety third. Today is the day of total failure. This module doesn't engrave, it's just a light. And then I tried to make it stronger with applying more voltage and more current and then it burned out. So we have to come up with a new solution to give this tiny crappy CNC any sense or any purpose. I wouldn't be who I am if I wouldn't have figured something out. As you see, I have strapped a soldering iron to my CNC and now it's a plastic or foam cutter. I'm using a piece of solder to check if the tip is hot. And when it's hot, we can start our code. It melts! Okay, let's raise the speed. Hundred and fifty percent of ten millimeters is fifteen millimeters, which is still very slow. Making a mess with foam is one part, but I also want to be able to make exact cuttings of funky foam and plastic stock. So I made an adjustable build plate. It works like any other build plate of any 3D printer. It's adjustable with four screws, so I'm able to level the bed and accommodate for different thicknesses of material. To prepare the files for our tiny CNC, we have to use a slicer. I'm using Cura, the same program I use for my 3D printers. And the settings are as follows. 
I have a layer height of 0.1 mm, you can use whatever you want. For every layer, the tiny TNT action does one pass, so the height of your model determines how many passes the soldering iron will do over the workpiece. I'm using zero infill, zero top and zero bottom layers, basically enabling vast mode. So just take vast mode or spiralize outer contour, which is the same thing. And then it will only do the outlines of your design. I have added a little air nozzle to my tiny CNC. This is to cool down the material and also blow away fumes. To start up the tiny CNC, we have to plug in three things. First, the tiny CNC itself, second, the pump for the air stream, and third, the soldering iron. Print from SD. And now we have to push this button. That's for safety. Well, it's uh, mirrored. Okay, I have to do some tweaking in the slicer, but that's pretty promising. To get the correct orientation in Cura, you just have to pretend that the build surface that Cura displays is the surface of your workpiece. If you place it directly on the surface and view it from the bottom side, that is what the machine is actually cutting. Engraving foam is all nice and dandy, but now I've got a real application. Wood burning. The outcome is not perfect, but it's workable. The Element 14 logo would burn into a piece of warped plywood and that's the reason why it's inconsistent. In conclusion, converting this tiny CNC into anything useful was a big big hassle and it was an unpleasant journey. Mechanical issues are one thing, electrical the other and firmware issues are a third thing. Then I burned out the laser ruined the z-axis and then I had to come up with something and that's the great thing about being a maker you can come up with something and make it work and now I have a wood burning machine which is cooler than the first thing I wanted to do. Is there any particular project you would like to use CNC wood burning in or do you have another idea for converting a CNC machine into I don't know anything? Tell us on the Element 14 community. So this project was way more difficult than I expected it to be, but the outcome is also way more cooler. I've got a CNC wood burning machine, who has something like that? I'll see you in the community, I gotta go, there's another project waiting for me.